After a wild few months for Linkin Park, their eighth studio album, From Zero, is finally here. Their first album in seven years, and first with new vocalist Emily Armstrong, this week it stormed into the charts at number one in multiple countries worldwide. But is it actually any good? Starting off the album with a very short opening title track we have From Zero. After a very brief opening choir, we assume it Emily gets cut off before she can finish her sentence. I think what she's going to say is, that was the first name of the band, wasn't it? Something like that. A reference to Linkin Park's original name, Zero, with an X. A very quick tongue-in-cheek nod that this will be a bit of a trip through the lore and a trip down memory lane for the band. Your blades are sharpened. Next up we have the first full song on the album, The Emptiness Machine. We'd obviously heard this quite a while ago because it was the first single released. I really think they made the right choice in making that the first single from the album, the first piece of new Linkin Park music we'd heard in seven years, because it's just it's just familiar enough with just a hint of what's to come on the rest of the album as well. And now that it's had some time to settle into their rotation, it really does feel like part of Linkin Park's catalogue. Yeah, it was like classic Linkin Park down with a bit of freshness because you had a different voice. You know, it was short and sweet, probably the most radio ready track that they had, as I, I would say, really catchy, easy to listen to. Next up we've got Cut the Bridge which is the first proper song that we hadn't already heard as one of the singles. It's got a really fun chorus, it'll be fun to hear live but honestly I feel like looking back at the album as a whole this is probably one of the ones, if it comes on shuffle I'll probably end up skipping it. Probably the weakest song yeah, quite sort of mid. Like it's upbeat and everything and like it fits in with the album. I don't know if you heard the stuff they did for the soundtrack to Maul, it's like it fits but it wasn't really then. It was very bog standard. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, it was very sort of, they could have left it out and it wouldn't have taken away from the album as a whole. But it does break up two heavier songs on the album. Definitely a good song and it will go hard live. But again, not something that I would keep in my in my playlist, so to speak. Yeah, no, I agree there. So following that, there was Heavy as the Crown, which was our first introduction to what Emily can really bring to the table, I think, vocally. Obviously, it was one they released before the album, so we got to listen to it and really give it a go beforehand. But it was one of them standout tracks for me. Yeah, love all the synths. It feels like a like a modern twist on a, on a classic formula. But I think, I think they made the right choice releasing it as the second single, giving Emily a chance to shine with that 16-second scream or whatever it is. Yeah, I think it was like a really good way to show the potential doubters that the stuff that is already in the, the catalogue with harsh but heavier vocals is not something that's going to get left in the past. It had sort of like faint vibes. I don't know if, if it would be an injustice to call it faint 2.0. It's like giving a modern twist on on the classic formula. We want to give you something that's familiar but we also kind of want to show you what we're capable of doing now 20 years later. This is the letter that I up next we've got Over Each Other which is the first time the album really slows down. We've had a couple of bangers but this song is a bit more laid back showcasing what else Emily can do. Not just the screaming and the harsh vocals but this shows the more gentle side to her voice. It shows that there's not just the gravel and the grit to her voice that she can actually sing. It's a bit of a like a almost like a, a, a look into like Emily's life and past. I think there's very much a bit of a personality and an ownership to them lyrics. Yeah, this really feels like one of the ones on the album that Emily's really come in and, and put her stamp on. Not just her voice singing, but her, it's like her voice in terms of uh, songwriting as well. I think it comes in a, a good spot in the album as well, like it breaks it up because you've got the heavier side to it. Then you have a bit of a reprieve and then this just breaks it up before part two or like the second half of the album kicks in. And then we get to Casualty, which for me was like a 9 out of 10 song. It's a it's a hardcore punk song. It's just not what you'd expect. It really hit me, took me by surprise. But I loved everything about it. I really didn't expect like Mike to start shouting. After a couple of listens, I kind of it kind of grew on me. But I think maybe that kind of vocals isn't for Mike. Yeah, that's the only real downside I'd say to the song is that it is something different for Mike, and I don't think it it works. But I do think Emily, what Emily brings to it does work and I think overall the song really works. You can tell that she's brought in a lot from 
led Sarah, her, her previous band, bring in more elements of what she's done and combining it with other. Like, I didn't hear it straight away, but I originally thought they'd never done anything like this before, but part of it sounds like it would be on the hunting party. I thought it was brand new to me at first, and then it kind of reminded me of Victimized from Living Things after mm-hmm. I'd given it a couple of listens. Yeah, it's definitely something that's a lot heavier than they've done before. As you said, it's, it's basically like a hardcore song. But it does. It feels it, out of everything on the album. It feels like the most different to what they've done before. We're all just a for a riot, catching fire, fighting. Next up, we've got Overflow, which is a very, very slow one compared to uh, everything we've had so far. It sounds like it's inspired by Radiohead. No matter how many times I listen to it, when when that intro comes on, I can't help but hear everything in, in its right place. But then it, it very quickly blends into something that I think Mike would write as part of a solo project. After a few listens as well over the week, I thought like the verses, they reminded me like 21 Pilots. Whether that's good or bad, I don't really know. <laughs> There was a good sort of like a darkness to it. There was an energy to it still, even though it was slow. It's one of a, a couple of tracks as well where you can see Mike has sort of evolved his style a bit, the way he raps. You can hear there's like the influence of modern rap rhythms. Yeah, and again, that kind of goes back to they're doing things the old way, but in new ways, taking all these things that they've done before and then putting a modern twist on them. And then we get to what I would say is hands down the strongest track on the album, which was Two Faced. It was just everything that you would expect from a Linkin Park song. You could have put that into Hybrid Theory or Meteora and it wouldn't have been out of place at all. Definitely strongly agree. It it is the best on the album. It sounds like how I would describe Linkin Park to someone who'd never heard them before. If you said to any guitarist, write me a, a Linkin Park riff, They'd probably write the Two-Faced riff. It was just perfect. Something that did stand out to me, however, and this is going to sound a little bit confusing, so bear with me. The way that Linkin Park structure their lyrics, when it comes to the end of the chorus, early Linkin Park would have said something like, caught in the middle, caught in the middle, and then Chester would like go into a scream and say, caught in the middle! And what they do now on this is, caught in the middle, caught in the middle, and then there's like a gang vocal that says, Two-Faced! And that's very much like a modern metal Bring Me The Horizon Architects kind of thing. And it's so interesting how Linkin Park was so influential to bands like that, that they're now taking inspiration from the bands that they inspired. It's like almost coming full circle. I, I've already like overplayed it, but I'm not sick of it and I'll continue to do so. We actually did a reaction video to that song. And if you'd like to check it out, uh, there will be a link in the description. There'll be in a title card at the end of the video as well. So please go and check that out. Next up, we've got another slow one, Stained. Again, I think it's it's something that sounds like it could be off Mike's post-traumatic or you know one of his other his other solo projects. And I think Emily sounds almost like a like a modern Miley Cyrus, which isn't a bad thing. She's very talented, but it's in, it's interesting how they're incorporating more R and B slower influences into the darkness. Of, of their songwriting i've tried to give it a chance I'm, I'm not i'm still not sure whether i like it or not like it's not a bad song but like it, it's another one that i think probably if they'd have left it out i wouldn't miss it yeah there are some songs that are definitely more skippable than others and I, even though even though i like the song i don't think it gives me anything that i can't get from somewhere else in lincoln park's catalog they did they did something different fair play to them but um i think it needs a bit of work <laughs> Going back to something a bit more heavy then, um, we've got I Gave You Everything I Had, or as it is pronounced, as it's spelled, Igir. This is uh, one of my favourites. There's that sort of punky heaviness to it. Like It's got that rawness and roughness to it. I do think the main riff sounds a lot like Tool, which isn't a bad thing. I love Tool. Tool are great. But it's great that they've taken inspiration from all these artists that they have no doubt been influenced by over the years and blended it with like their own style that they helped pioneer as well. I enjoyed the fact that it was as much as I was ready for a nostalgia fest with this album I still wanted to hear something that was different and this to me is it's not just like we're a new metal band and we're going to play new metal but we wanted to grow our sound as we went along we're just going back to our roots this is the kind of song that you would expect or you would imagine most of them grew up listening to 
Yeah, and then I think combining that with giving Emily a chance to prove people wrong about her vocals and her, you know, the power of her voice, the diversity she's got on the range. Yes, she can do the, the softer stuff. Yes, she can do the hardcore stuff. But this is the first kind of song that she gets to showcase kind of all of that, and especially those screams towards the end. That's the place where she gets to prove everybody wrong. And then finally, we get to Good Things Go, a masterpiece, I think. It was it was brilliant. I didn't expect it, but it was a really good ending to the album, I think. It was like a bit of a ballad. It's catchy, really good vocal performances. I think it's one of them ones that people will find really empowering when they're listening to it in a, in a good mood. But if they're a bit down in the dumps, I think it's one of them ones that could really weigh heavy. It's a great way to end the album, not just because of the name, but it's like a slow, emotional song and you can kind of put what you want on it, giving Emily almost like the final word i mean literally but also figuratively that her vocals really like crescendo at the end of this song and at the end of the album to give her the final say on this is me and what i can do the entire structure of the song was brilliant like there's a really good soft build from start to finish but then it's not too hard at the end it doesn't get to a point where it just becomes unnecessarily bogged down with noise and too many layers it was just enough there for me Overall then, I do think this is a great way to capture the spirit of some of the older Linkin Park albums, while also kind of get people reacquainted with their sound and bring people into the future with them. There's a lot of elements taken from different stages in the band's catalogue and then bringing in new influences, new sounds as well. I think it's just the right amount of nostalgia combined with just the right amount of fresh modern ideas. Yeah, I think you've you've hit the nail on the head there. It definitely felt quite complete. It's only half an hour, but at the same time, it's not a disappointment in half an hour it's very easy to listen to and yeah there are songs that you might skip but it's pretty strong in my opinion like it's a solid album i'm gonna say a solid eight out of ten for me i'm torn between eight or nine i think if the weaker tracks were left out probably would have given it the nine like they did something different they tried something in my opinion it didn't really work for those tracks but on the songs that it did work on brilliant knocked it out of the park the lincoln park so those were our thoughts on the brand new Linkin Park album, From Zero. What did you think? Let us know in the comments down below. Or come and join our Discord that we now have set up. A few people are in there already chatting to us about music and chatting to us about trying to get Linkin Park tickets, which, as of the time of recording this, go on sale tomorrow morning. We are going to be very desperately trying to get hold of them. Come and follow us on social media. We are on Instagram. Facebook, all the other ones that I don't know how to use because I'm an old man. Subscribe if you're not already. Thank you very much for watching and we will see you in the next one. Toodles. Toodles. Hi everyone, hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you very much for watching all the way to the end. If you want to see something similar to this, then you can click on the link here. If you want to see something very different to this, then you can click on the link here. And if you haven't subscribed already and you want to, you can click on the link here. If you want to come and follow us on social media, you can click on the links in the description down below. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next one.